Hey, what's up, guys? It's Donkey Shot for fxray.com. Welcome to another fantastic Photoshop tutorial. Today, we take a look at Justin Timberlake's artwork for his new album, where he stands in a tuxedo in front of an eye testing machine, which, as we all know, is also called a Foraptor. Unfortunately, it's not Justin, it's my agent Dave. Since we don't have any ophthalmologists in our team, we had to rebuild the eye testing machine. So we created vector shapes, added layer styles and textures to make it look photorealistic. Back in our main document, we duplicated the parts, flipped them horizontally, adjusted the contrast and added shadow. And with a little bit of typology, it almost looks like the original. Let's get started. Download the project files from our website and open the shapes PSD. We have seven different layers in our PSD file, each one for a part of the foraptor. And I'm gonna hide six of them and focus on my form layer. By double clicking on a layer, I can enter the layer style dialog. And since I wanna bevel my form, I activate bevel and boss, set the depth to 1000% and set the size to a small amount of about two or three pixels. Change the gloss contour to the third preset. And let's zoom in a little bit so we really get to see what we're doing. Let's add more detail by activating contour and select this preset. Activate anti-aliased and set the range to about 70%. That's it for our main layer. Activate the leather layer, which is called leather because we're going to apply a leather texture later to it. And activate bevel and emboss. Again, set the depth to 1000% and the size to about 6 pixel. And let's soften the edge just a little bit. And again, change the gloss contour to this preset. You have to change the gloss contour, otherwise it looks too simple. The next layer is the frame that gets this metal look. So activate gradient overlay with an angle style and click on the gradient. Change the gradient type to noise. And since we want to have only black and white tones, change the color model to LAB. Set the colors to zero in both channels A and B so we only have luminances. Press the random button until it looks fine like here and press OK. Adjust the position of the gradient or the center of the gradient and decrease the opacity so it gets this chrome or metal look. Our next layer should look like plastic. Double click to enter layer styles and activate bevel and emboss. Again, set the depth to 1000% and the size to about late, maybe 5 pixels. Then change the style to outer bevel. So the bevel is really outside the shape. And set the direction to down to invert highlights. And a little adjustment on the gloss contour. Select this hunchback preset to reduce the contour. Then activate the contour style and select this preset and let's zoom in a little bit activate anti-aliased and set the range to about 40 percent it still doesn't look like plastic though so activate set in style and set the opacity really low to about 10 percent and again let's change the contour and this time we can select maybe this one to have a really abrupt change in the structure and set the distance to about 10 pixels and the size to maybe 25 pixels and maybe still lower the opacity then activate color overlay just a little bit so it's not too flat just some highlights some shadows that's fine next is our grasp layer which will actually get a leather texture as well but still it needs a little bit of bevel and emboss so depth 100%, 1000%, uh, size really small, and maybe, let's see, maybe this contour here, okay. Our next layer is the metal layer, which actually is the holder for the lenses, and it's pretty similar to the frame, we add a noise gradient that looks like metal in an LAB channel, just the luminances. And let's see what Photoshop offers us. To dark, to bright. Okay. And set the style to angle. 
and reposition the center of the gradient. Then reduce the opacity to make it look like metal. And add a bevel and emboss with a pretty small size and decrease the highlights or the opacity of the highlights. Okay, and let's add a drop shadow um, with a low distance and a lower opacity. And I think the size, I think the size is okay. And finally, the attachment layer, which is going to have another leather texture, but still needs a little bit of bevel and emboss. Um, let's see. Change the gloss contour to this funny guy here. And let's move a little bit. Okay, well, looks actually looks okay. And add a drop shadow uh, with a lower opacity. And softer okay that's our first result created of vector shapes and layer styles only now let's make it even more photorealistic open the leather texture from our website copy it and paste it into our document put the texture right above the leather layer hold the alt key and click between the two layers now the texture is visible on our leather layer only, so it is actually like a mask, except we do still see the bevel and emboss. Doing a little positioning and scaling here. Okay, hold the command key and drag the leather texture above the grasp layer to create a copy and clip it with a layer. Then reposition and scale and even rotate uh, the texture to vary the structure. Create a last copy of the texture and put it on top, then link it with the attachment layer and put it in position. This is our basis, created out of one texture and layer styles only. Now we're going to add a few more elements to make it look real. The texture is not going to be needed anymore, you can close it. Then select all of our layers and press Command G to put them into a group and name the group form. Zoom in for the bottom plastic area and now we're going to create a controller out of nothing actually. For that purpose you need the ellipse tool and create a circle with white foreground color in the area somewhere here. And again to make a shape look photorealistic and plastic you have to add layer styles and a good way is to add bevel and embers and in this case I'm going to use an outer bevel and a little bit smaller size and we're going to change the light direction but first make sure to deactivate use global light otherwise all your uh, layer styles will change then change the glass contour again and add another contour maybe maybe this too anti-aliased and see how many details we get in there but it's not soft on the inside so activate inner shadow set the distance to zero and a very small size so we really get a soft inner side and then add a gradient overlay very soft just to create a little bit more plasticity rename the layer into controller then select the line tool which is here with a white of one pixel and a black fill color create a line in the middle of a circle and it's not crucial if it's not exactly the middle we can fix that later put the line above the controller layer then press Option, Command and T. Photoshop automatically created a copy of a line that is ready for being transformed and so I rotate it 12 degree and confirm. Get ready to see the magic happen. Photoshop is smart enough to remember my last transformation and by pressing Option, Shift, Command and T it will repeat the steps relatively. And it's all in one single shape layer, such a huge time saver.
quickly rename the layer and press Command J to create another copy and rotate it four degrees, but this time make it a little bit smaller. Maybe something like, something like that. And by holding the Shift key, I can guarantee that the center will not change. Duplicate it one more time, rotate it another four degrees and merge the layers. Select both lines and controller and arrange them in the center. Now we want to change our lines into a mark. Um, for that purpose, select the ellipse tool and create a circle that is smaller than the actual lines. Then put a layer on top, create a selection, select the lines layer and add an inverted layer mask. Next, we're going to change our circle shape into a metal cap, but first we're going to make it slightly smaller. Then double click on a layer to enter layer styles. To achieve this metal look, I need a gradient in angle style and I create a mix of white and black colors and try to really get harsh angles in there by dragging the slider between two colors in one direction. Yet there are too many blacks in, but I can diminish the opacity to achieve exactly the metal look I want. But a metal is too clean. I need to add some patina, some stains or scratches. So add a new empty layer above and select one of the structured brushes with maybe 10% opacity and really start to paint in some stains in both black and white color. And you can also add scratches by creating a very small, very hard brush with maybe 5% opacity and really paint scratches on the metal. Okay, but maybe a little bit too intense. So we can always change the blend mode to overlay or even decrease the opacity. For the sake of convenience, I select both layer and merge them. And what I want to do next is I want to put a knob on this controller. First of all, I select the custom shape tool and add all shapes that come with Photoshop. And I'm looking for a shape that might look like a knob. And let's try this one. Admittedly, it's hard to see there a knob at the first glance, but I'm working on it. Select the elliptical marquee tool and try to cut into the prongs. Then add an inverted layer mask on the shape layer. And this by far looks more like a knob. Then duplicate the metal cap layer above and scale it down. Um, so it's like the cover of our knob and rotate it just to vary it a little bit. Then double click on a knob layer to enter layer styles and try to add highlights and shadow with the bevel and emboss style and a little fixing of the position here. Press command J to create another copy, make it slightly smaller, rotate it a bit and add a drop shadow, deactivate use global light and play with distance and size a little softer. Okay, I think, okay, that looks fine. Still fighting with the position here, but I guess that's fine. Select all the new layers and put them into a group. Next, we need to add a caption to our controller. So I create a text or, or a number and put it somewhere here. And to get an idea where the center of my controller is, I select the group, press Command T and drag the guides directly to the center. With my text layer selected, I again press Alt Command T like I did with the lines, but this time I drag the rotation point to the center of my controller and rotate it 20 degrees and confirm. Then again, press Shift Alt Command T to create duplicates of the text around the controller. Then select all text layers, press Command G and put them into a numbers group. The caption seems to be a little bit too big, so select the folder, press Command T and make it slightly smaller. Then put the numbers group into our controller group. My assistant Tatiana provided a Lenses PSD for us, which contains images of old cameras she shot. 
and also include paths for the more complicated shapes like the lens. Create a selection out of the path and copy the lens into our document. Press Command T and scale it down so it matches the metal framework. Double click on a layer and add a drop shadow with maybe 50% opacity. Switch back to the old cameras and select the slide, copy it into our document, and again, transform it, scale it down, rotate it, and find a spot where it, where it looks good. Then select the next lens with the elliptical uh, marquee tool and paste it into our document, transform it, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are well aware of the fact that ophthalmologically this Foraptor doesn't make any sense. And we also don't care. But I'm curious, is there an ophthalmologist under our spectators? I'm sitting in front of my computer 24-7 and my diopter values are getting worse and worse. Anyways, here's a nice socket screw I can use in my composition. So let's paste it in there. And of course we're going to add a layer style. Um, outer bevel, depth a thousand percent as usual. Let's play with the parameters. And that's okay, but not here and too big. And while holding Alt and Command key, I can drag the screw all over my image and create copies. Okay, let's add one more element for today. And again, try to make it smaller. And this time we can invert it to make it darker. And I think I can live with this result. So select the layers and put them into a group. Then select all groups and convert them into a smart object. Open the image of my agent, who is single by the way, so if any senorita is uh, interested, just drop me a quick line. And select the crop tool as a square, and off with his head, or parts of it. Switch back to the Foraptor, and right click on a smart object, select duplicate layer, and set Dave as destination. Position the Foraptor, and match the lens with his eye, now we need a mirrored version of this element, but we cannot just copy and flip it horizontally, but we have to create a new smart object via copy. I will explain in a second, but first press Command T and flip it horizontally. As you can see, the caption of my controller is mirrored as well, which looks odd. That's why I double click on my new smart object, select my numbers folder, press Command T and flip it horizontally again. And since I flipped it here, it will look all right in my already flipped smart object in here. Awesome. Well, for now, the two elements look too similar. That's why I add a levels adjustment layer and I clip it with the left element. Increase the brightness a lot, then invert the layer mask by pressing Command I, select a white soft brush with, let's say 20% opacity and paint over some chosen spots. And since my virtual light is flashing directly into my left lens, I can fill it completely white. And finally create a new layer right above the background layer and paint with a black soft brush some shadows right in his face. And that's how far our tutorial goes actually. Of course, you can add a lot more details into the eye testing machine. And of course, you can add typology. The font used for this artwork is Gotham. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial, which is a really good way to get comfortable with layer styles. My name is Justin Timberlake. Take care.